Research has proved that poor housing and living conditions have uh, actually put a very big strain on other fundamental human rights like access to good health, access to water and sanitation, and access to a good environment. We must accept there is need for social housing. Housing is the bedrock of the economy. Housing is the foundation for any planning of any economy. Uh, working with Habitat has actually touched us as, as, as staff. When I had just joined Habitat, whenever I would go to the field, I would spend days crying because of the appalling situation in the field. Uh, in my UK in particular, uh, I have a personal story. There's this lady called Nairuba. Nairuba, even when we went to assess where to build for her, we could not even, we didn't have where to start. She had a very small piece of land. She was miserable and she had just lost a child. And that child had not died because of, you know, serious illness, but it was because of poor living conditions. Most of the communities we do assess or we do visit, they don't have a clean toilet or don't have any access to sanitation facilities. Most of these don't have where to put their waste management. Imagine the children, the young girls walking long distances to go to their schools or to actually go and fetch water at night. It's really touching because if you, if you compare the situation in the countryside and maybe the central, you will really see a big difference there. <laughs> Our vision is a world where everyone has a decent place to call home. Habitant as an organization alone may not be able to address the housing deficit of about 2. Point, I think 2.2 .2 million housing units. So we, we call upon partners to join this course where we are trying to uplift the standard of people with different vulnerabilities to a level where they can also enjoy like any other maybe citizen or human being. We have a very interesting program as we carry out the Decent Living campaign and that is uh, vocational training. We have discovered the secret in training the youth in these households that we work with. We pick out youth who have uh, dropped out of school and have no hope actually of going back to school. So we take them to a training, uh, a vocational training institute and they do a course of their choice. Uh, some of them have done carpentry, the girls have done tailoring, um, and also hairdressing. There are others who are doing concrete uh, uh, bricklaying and concrete practice. Uh, this is our humble appeal to all the people of this country, to all the well-wishers, to all people uh, who have noticed or who have taken keen interest uh, in addressing the housing gap uh, in our country. We are seeking your partnership. We are asking you, requesting you, to come and join us in this decent living campaign. We are aiming at improving shelter. We are aiming at improving livelihoods. When we improve shelter, we shall build a house. And uh, when we take some of these children to vocational training schools, we shall improve their livelihoods. 
and then we are also uh, seeking or targeting to improve access to safe water and this is where I talked about the water harvesting tank and lastly we want to improve the hygiene and sanitation of at least 20 families you know a year maybe you you are asking how much does a house cost I know people are used to the houses of 300 million, 200 million. You'll be surprised. Our house is a low cost house. We build a house at 19 million, but the 19 million has changed lives. This is why we call upon you to join us to raise 19 million for each of these 20 houses. And I know we can do it. Together we can. We have done it in Mayuge. We have done it in Kumi, we have done it in Chirandongo, we are doing it in Fort Porto, and we know we can do it even in Buganda Kingdom. So I even want to thank you ahead of time because I know that you'll join us in this noble cause. Thank you very much. Abitanti, Ezra Kuchawa Gana, 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 Ezra Kuchawa